In this video, we're going to take a look at working with the image texture node when using Octane for Cinema 4D. And for this video, I'm using the Machinery 01.C4D scene. And it's just got kind of like some simple sci-fi machinery geometry in here. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to go into the Octane node editor. So materials, node editor. And I'm going to create a new material. So let's create an Octane material, go into the basic settings, and I'm going to set the type to glossy. So let's take a look at this here. And so it's applied to this surface right here. So let's apply it to that one front panel to apply selected. And you can see it appears as white in the live render view or the live viewer. So let's take a look at some of the settings here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the attributes for this material and click on diffuse. And if I click on this bar next to texture, it's going to automatically open up the texture browser. And I want to look for the uh, panel 06 diffuse.png file. So let's select that. I will copy it to my local project directory, the texture directory for the project. And you can see it's applied here on the surface right here. And by default, it's applied based on the UVs of the surface. That's the default uh, mapping. Uh, if we take a look here, the node that is created is a Cinema 4D bitmap node, which you can use with Octane materials. So if I select a node, we can see the attributes here over on the right hand of this, the uh, panel. And if we take a look at the settings, I can do things like I can adjust the color profile. So I can set this to linear sRGB or custom or the embedded profile. Um, however, if I start adjusting like the black point and the white point, we don't really see an update here on our surface. And this is kind of the limitation of using the Cinema 4D bitmap texture. Uh, it's usually a better idea when working with Octane materials to use the Octane image texture node. So I'll go up here and let's create an image texture. I'll click and drag in here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the path from my bitmap node to the file input of my image texture node, and then let's reconnect it to the diffuse channel. So you can see there's not much of a change on the appearance of our model yet, but if we look at the attributes for the image texture, you can see there are other settings that are more relevant to rendering with Octane. The most important setting is the type. So I can set this to normal, float or alpha. So normal just means RGB. Float is a grayscale image, which is great for things like roughness or a bump. Uh, and then we also have the alpha input, which uses the alpha channel of the texture uh, as the input. So this is great for opacity. So let's take a look at each one of these in order. So normal refers to an RGB or just a standard color image. I can control the uh, darkness or the brightness of the image by adjusting the power and I also have a slider for the gamma, which adjusts the midpoint or the mid values of the image. And I can also invert it by turning on the invert button right here. So that's all pretty straightforward stuff. The next most important setting is the channel format. And this allows you to select the bit depth of the image. By default, it's set to half. But if I set this to auto, then Octane will automatically detect the bit depth of the image and apply it accordingly. If I set this to uint8, then that works for 8-bit images. So it'll restrict the bit depth to 8 bits. If I have a 32-bit EXR image or a floating point image, I can set this to float. And then finally, if I have a 16-bit image, I can set this to half. Uh, so let's select our metal material that's applied to the rest of the surface here and bring it into the node editor. Let's create a new image texture. And in the attributes, I'm going to open up the file browser and choose the panel 06 noise.png file. That's what it looks like. And I'll choose yes to connect it or to copy it to my project texture directory. And let's connect this texture to the roughness channel of our surface. So let's make sure that we go into the uh, basic settings here for shader and set the type to float. Since it is a grayscale image, we don't want to waste memory if we're not 
if we have unused channels, so we don't want to process them. So sending it to float is a good way to save that. VRAM, you zoom in here, you can see it kind of looks like a little smudge. So I'm going to go into the settings here and adjust the power and the gamma, and you can see some of that detail coming through in the roughness channel. So let's create another image texture. And in the settings, I'm going to open up the file browser and this time select panel 06 bump, copy it to my projects directory and make sure that we connect it to the bump channel. And again, I want to go in here and set the type to float. And you can sort of see that now we got that kind of bump detail coming through on the surface. So we can control the strength of the bump by adjusting the power slider or the gamma slider. There's two kind of different ways to adjust how the bump looks on the surface. We'll have a whole video that talks about the uh, bump uh, texture in more uh, detail or the bump input in more detail, but that's kind of the basics of working with the bump texture. So I've jumped over to Photoshop here and I have this image, which you can see looks blank, apparently. This is the panel 06 alpha.tiff file. If I take a look at the alpha channel though, you can see that there is information in this channel. So it's just in the alpha in, uh, channel and not of the other ones. And I did this just to kind of demonstrate a point of how the alpha image type works. Let's create a new image texture and let's connect to that panel 06 alpha.tiff. So it's an image with an alpha channel. Let's go ahead and connect it to our project directory. Select the type and set it to alpha. And now I'm going to connect it to the opacity channel. When I do this, you can see how the image information in that alpha channel is being used to cut out pieces of the surface or make parts of the surface transparent, uh, depending on whether they're black, white, or in between. So that kind of varies the opacity there. But that's how the alpha image type works. Pretty easy to use. Finally, let's take a look at how we can use uh, an image sequence to create an animated texture effect. I'm going to graph the floor material, which is just a glossy material applied to that plane there. Let's create a new image texture, and I'm going to connect it to the diffuse channel, so it's going to appear white. And let's select it and go into the shader and open up the file browser, and I'm going to go to the uh, texture directory, choose noise sequence, comp one, and select this uh, noise texture. It's just an animated noise. It was created in After Effects. And choose open. I'm not going to copy this to the project directory for now. I'll just leave it outside of it. Uh, so I just want to do a quick demonstration. That's connected. I'll go to the animation section and we can set the mode so that it's simple loop or ping pong. So it's just going forward or it's bouncing back and forth or it's looping. Then I can set the frame range. So I'll set the last frame to 70. You can see when I scrub in the timeline, we can see that it updates. So we have an animated texture applied to that plane right there. So that's pretty easy to use and pretty straightforward. So that is the basics of working with the image textures in Octane for Cinema 4D.